Sonic the Hedgehog is a platform video game developed by Sonic Team and published by Sega for the Sega Mega Drive as it is known in Europe or alternatively the Sega Genesis as it is known in America. Sega's home video game console, the Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis. The first game in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, it was released in North America in June 1991, and in European regions and Japan the following month. The game features Sonic the Hedgehog, who can run at supersonic speeds, setting out on a quest to defeat Dr. Robotnik, a scientist who has imprisoned animals and robots and seeks the powerful Chaos Emeralds, which Sonic must collect to obtain the game's true ending. The gameplay involves collecting rings as a form of health and protection from damage with a simple control scheme with jumping and attacking controlled by a single button incorporating high speed puzzle elements and bright colorful stages and characters. In the 1980s, Sega had limited success with Genesis slash Mega Drive ports of its arcade games, but desired a stronger foothold against its main competitor, Nintendo. In 1988, Sega of Japan began an in-house competition to find a rival to Nintendo's legendary character, Super Mario. Programmers and designers at Sega worked on a brand character to rival Mario for the next three years. Sega had previously used the character Alex Kidd as their mascot, who starred in his own series of games, but he was considered too similar to Mario and deemed unsatisfactory for what they were aiming for. The team developed ideas for characters, an engine and gameplay mechanics Development emphasized speed, so Sega considered fast creatures such as kangaroos and squirrels and eliminated designs not associated with fast animals. One idea in particular, a rabbit able to grasp objects with prehensile ears, showed promise, but was too complex for the Genesis hardware at the time. The team narrowed its search to animals that could roll into a ball, their idea for an attacking move, and considered armadillos and hedgehogs. The hedgehog character, proposed by Naoto Oshima, prevailed. The armadillo became the basis for the character Mighty the Armadillo, who appeared in 1993's Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, and made a return many years later in the game Sonic Mania. Oshima went on vacation to New York, taking sketches with him. He went to Central Park and asked locals for their opinions on them, and Sonic was the favorite. A man with a mustache, who eventually became Dr. Robotnik, was in second place. And, just like that, after much design, comprehension of their overall direction, a decision was made, and a legendary hero in Sonic the Hedgehog, an infamous villain in Dr. Robotnik slash Dr. Eggman, were created. Two legendary figures and gaming history that continue to stand the test of time of relevancy to this current day. The music, interestingly, was composed by Masato Nakamura, songwriter of the J-pop band Dreams Come True. 
Sonic the Hedgehog was extremely well received by critics and players alike, who deeply praised the game's visuals, audio, and of course, what matters, the gameplay. It is widely considered one of the greatest video games of all time, and one of the most influential platformers ever created. It was also commercially successful, becoming one of the best-selling video games of all time, with approximately 24 million copies sold worldwide across all platforms. Also, you have to take into account the fact this game has been sold on many platforms in the years since its release, meaning the true monetary value of its sales could be even higher, and the quantity too. This game is so popular, it's been put on a lot of different platforms. Furthermore, the success of Sonic the Hedgehog established the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive as a key player in the 16-bit video game era, and allowing it to compete head-to-head -head with Nintendo's Super Nintendo Entertainment System console, Sega vs. Nintendo. Sonic's success led to an extensive media franchise, with the first of many sequels, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, released the following year. Which is a game we will also have on this channel at some point in the near future. Stay tuned for that, my friends. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 ASMR. Also, Sonic the Hedgehog's success has generated dozens of additional games and a large cast of recurring characters, keeping Sonic and Robotnik, later renamed as Eggman, as series mainstays, and continued beyond Sega's exit from the console industry after the Sega Dreamcast. The series has ventured from platformers to fighting games, racing games, role-playing games, and sports games, and has even expanded into anime, manga, cartoons, comic books, novels, and toys, among many other forms of merchandising. And now, this wonderful, legendary gaming adventure is used to enjoy an ASMR form. And so, a story begins. South Island, located on planet Mobius, is a peaceful paradise. Until the insane scientist, Dr. Ivo Robotnik, also known as Dr. Eggman, is gathering up the intelligent animals that live there and systematically transforming them all into the Badniks, an army of robot soldiers that he intends to use to conquer the planet. Unfortunately, for Robotnik, there's one serious problem. The island happens to also be the home of Sonic the Hedgehog, an unusual blue hedgehog who possesses razor-sharp quills, the power to run at supersonic speeds, and most of all, an attitude. Not only is Sonic far too fast to be caught, but thanks to his sense of justice, he's made it his mission to free his friends and take the fight to the doctor's doorstep. On the adventure, Sonic must free the innocent animals, defeat Dr. Robotnik, and find the mysterious Chaos Emeralds before they can fall into the wrong hands and bring peace to South Island. Today, we shall together be watching a playthrough of this game for the purposes of invoking A S M R Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response and hopefully having some fun together along the way this video is intended 
as a playthrough of a game with elements of ease to help people relax or fall asleep. Perhaps you'll find something different from this video than was intended when it was created. Regardless what that may be, I hope you get something positive from this video and you enjoy and of course have a wonderful day no matter who you are or where you are. I hope you have a wonderful time. I am Alakazam A-S-M-R and let us begin. Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR Please enjoy, my friends. And welcome, my friends, to Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR. Let us begin in the Green Hill Zone, Act 1. Your basic controls of Sonic the Hedgehog are this. You can look up, crouch down, and Sonic can jump with his spin dash and collect rings, which are used to protect himself from damage from enemies called the Badniks, owned by Dr. Robotnik. So, we can implement Sonic's iconic speed, which was quite revolutionary for the time that this game came out. The sheer speed you're able to move around at, jumping on springs, moving quickly, avoiding falling platforms, combined with a beautiful, colorful background, as well as very well-made sprites and a really catchy soundtrack for the Green Hill Zone. So, I'm going to keep jumping on these platforms here. Then, I'm going to get this item, which is a shield, which will protect us from exactly one hit before it disappears. Next, I'm going to keep going forward. Falling down the platforms, Jump, jump, jump. Try and collect as many rings as we can. Okay, let's keep moving forwards. Taking out bad mix as we advance. More rings. We collect. 100 rings, which rewards us with an extra life. As Sonic moves forward and backwards on the screen, we approach the end. Sonic has passed Act 1. But that's not all. We've jumped into a giant ring, which takes us to the special stage. Now, let me explain how this works. Sonic is through a rotating labyrinth filled with beautiful colors. Inside this stage is an item called a Chaos Emerald, which we need to unlock the true ending of the game. However, it's quite tricky to navigate. You see, those little buttons with R on them will reverse the flow in which we move around. But, nonetheless, we managed to take advantage of our movement and obtain our first Chaos Emerald. And now, let's go to Green Hill Zone, Act 2. Now that we've roughly explained how the gameplay of Sonic the Hedgehog works, we can get back to just enjoying the game itself. 
It's part of the simplicity and charm of Sonic the Hedgehog, and explains why it was such a monumental hit in gaming history. It's really a game that everyone can get into. Whether you want to go as fast as you can, or do what I'm doing here, and take a more methodical, careful approach. I like playing fast, but I also like exploring areas for bonus items. The game doesn't discourage you either way. So long as you don't take 10 minutes to complete a level, you can do whatever you want. As if you reach 10 minutes in a level, you will automatically lose a life. But, thanks to Sonic's very rapid speed, we'll do it. And that little box grants Sonic and ourselves an extra life. Quite handy. Now let's use that speed to go through this loop. And this power-up is one of the most legendary power-ups in gaming. It gives you temporary invincibility. But it's just the theme song so catchy. We take down more badniks. Keep moving forwards. And at the last moment, we jump into the giant ring. And Sonic is past Act 2. Now, we're going to go back into the next special stage, where we need to seek the second Chaos Emerald. Hmm. Got to go around here. Now the main obstacle is these little glowing orbs in red that say Goal. If we touch that, we'll exit the special stage without the Emerald. So we've got to avoid that as best as we can. Now, to multitask which direction you're going in and having it suddenly be changed can quite simply melt your brain sometimes. Oh, don't want to go there. Alright, so... Hey, we got a hundred rings. That little sound means we got a little bonus, which we'll see at the end of the stage if we manage to reach it. Now through this space here is the Chaos Emerald. Let's get in there. Hmm. So we need to hit these small spheres. Well, not spheres, more like diamond-shaped objects. Hit them enough times and eventually they'll disappear. If we can break through, we can get the second Chaos Emerald, if we're lucky. I love the background of the special stage. It's really relaxing and beautiful to me. The bubbles and the fish in the background. Very pleasant to look at. And now clouds and buds. Come on, we can do this. We can get that emerald. We can take as long as we need in here, so long as we don't fail. Alright, Sonic. Let's go. Let's get the emerald. Excellent. We now have two Chaos Emeralds, and our bonus, a continue, meaning if Sonic loses all of our lives, we can use a continue to resume our progress. And now we go to Green Hill Zone, Act 3, but look up there. Hidden away in the trees is a little power-up. It's always nice to have some bonuses and secrets hidden in the stage for people observant enough to find them. So, I'm going to take advantage of the invincibility to move a little bit more recklessly than we're used to. You see, there's an appeal to playing with a high speed. Very risky, but very satisfying to pull off. Or you can go in a more platforming kind of section. Well, the rewards are great, but the risk is great too if you fall down and achieve nothing. 
It's all up to you, the player. This is just how I personally am choosing to go through Green Hill Zone Act 3. And, I forgot to say, those little signposts that spin are checkpoints. So, if we manage to lose a life at any point, we will respawn at those signposts. A lot of Sonic players will already know what this means, but this video is meant as a means for everyone to enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR. Whether it's someone who's played this game dozens of times, or it's someone who's never played Sonic the Hedgehog before. I want to make this video accessible to everyone. And I get to have a lot of fun playing a classic game along the way. Now. I might have an invincibility, but I'm going to move across this bridge like I normally would, just to see if I can. There we go. Now, we jump on the spring, get some rings, take down an enemy, jump over these ledges. Ooh, lost our shield. Gotta watch out for that. Alright. Rotating bridge. Excellent. Those flying hornet enemies can get you out of nowhere. They spawn really quickly. Doesn't take much to make a mistake, even as early as this stage of the game. And now, we're approaching something special. A boss. Dr. Robotnik. Let's take him down, Sonic. So... Using this construct, he's trying to damage Sonic. But with the right timing, we can jump in between unharmed. Or use the platforms on each side. Whether it's left side. Or right side. Hmm. Be patient, and we can take him down. And Dr. Robotnik goes down. Next, the capsule is broken, releasing all the innocent animals taken hostage by Dr. Robotnik. And like that, Sonic has passed Act 3 of the Green Hill Zone. And now, we approach the Marble Zone, Act 1. Now you're going to get to see a different side to Sonic the Hedgehog. While you still have a bright, colorful level, the approach to the level is a bit more methodical. Green Hill Zone, you have loops, springs, and things to encourage rapid movement. The Marble Zone is kind of a way of putting the brakes on a little bit, as there's lava, moving platforms, and other obstacles to keep you on your toes. Let's go, Sonic. Avoid this fire here. Luckily, he's fast enough to avoid. And luckily, we get a shield. Very good. Always good to have a failsafe. Nobody's perfect, especially not me. So it's nice to have something to fall back on if I make a mistake. These badniks are flying bats. So... Take him down, Sonic. We also have a puzzle element here. The world's easiest puzzle, but nonetheless, we have to push this little block here onto the switch to hold it in place. Next, we're going to move down here carefully and avoid these spikes that can appear from the walls. A second shield. Lovely. Now, let's not get crushed to death and carefully maneuver over these falling blocks. All right. Carefully, and we'll succeed. All right. Now there's another spike hole I'm about to fall down. That's it. Oop, wasn't quick enough to get that. But just a moment later, we're able to jump. Jump, jump. Two badniks. Gotta watch out for that. Okay, careful not to fall in the lava, or the fireballs. Ooh, that was a close call. Luckily, as I said, it's nice to have a failsafe 
in case I make a mistake. Our precious rings are valuable after all. Just in the nick of time, Sonic has passed Act 1 of the Marble Zone and collected the giant ring, which means one thing. Once again, we enter the special stage, where we have to go and try and locate the third Chaos Emerald. Right in the middle. Maybe we can get it rather quickly. Oop. Perhaps not. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. Try and keep it centered. Ooh, ooh, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to do that. Alright, so... It's kind of hard to process what's going on sometimes. My apologies. We'll get that Chaos Emerald, I know we can. So, gonna rotate more to the right. Ah, but I reversed the direction. You can hear the confusion in my voice trying to process all this. That's it. Now we can use the gravity to our advantage to lean into these objects, gradually making them disappear. So it's a red Chaos Emerald. I think it's red or pink. I'm trying to multitask here. Right. So... Whoop. How are we going to do this? There we go. Get in there, get in there. We might be able to get the emerald. We're successful. And now we have three Chaos Emeralds. Excellent work, Sonic. And we got another continue, which is always nice to have. Now we go towards Marble Zone, Act 2. So you can see the difference between Green Hill Zone and Marble Zone. We can't just blaze through this level at 100 miles per hour. This one we do need to watch when we're going ahead. Because there's lots of things that can cause hazards. Falling platforms, getting crushed, spikes, badniks, lava, you name it. And now, the game's deliberately slowing us down to test our patience. We have to jump on these columns through the lava. Is there an item back here? Yes, there is. A shield. Always useful. I feel a little bit naked without a shield in these games. So it's always good to have it. It just makes me relax a bit more knowing I've got a bit of protection on hand. You know what I'm saying? Now, gotta get away from this lava here. Keep running, Sonic. Alright. Oh, we had quite a bit of time left. Good to know. Don't jump too soon. There's two badniks up here. Spikes tucked away sneakily into these columns. Whoop. Careful. Jump. Quite satisfying to time that jump well. Keep moving. Spin dash. Watch out for the springs. Yellow springs will send you bouncing away, but red springs will rapidly fire you away. So it can be useful or devastating if done at the right or wrong time. If you get a spring and it lets you explore, it's quite satisfying and useful. But if you get a spring and you're near something like a hazard such as spikes or lava, it can be enough to take Sonic down one life. But, we approach with caution, we should be okay. And we keep moving forwards, past the lava. Merrily grabbing rings as we go. After all, we need rings in order to access the special stage. We need rings to access the special stage at the end of each level, when we go through the sonic signpost. Speaking of signposts, there's a checkpoint we've just reached there. Okay, be careful because these fireballs are quite annoying to dodge when you're jumping over them. They have a tendency of hitting you just when you think they're not going to launch up. Alright. Hornet enemy, take him down. 
quite a lot of them. Spin dash. We get some points for taking down these blocks. Thousand points apiece after a while. One, two, three, five thousand thousand. Alright. Another shield. Excellent. Now make sure we don't damage ourselves here. Watch out for falling lava. Excellent invincibility. Alright. Even though I'm invincible and I can survive the lava, I don't know why I'm just standing on that platform. Let's just go ahead and skip it. Okay. Jumping up from here. Hmm. More spike platforms. Alrighty. Sonic has passed Act 2, and we have reached the special stage. Yet again. Now let's see if we can grab Chaos Emerald number 4. These special stages will get more and more convoluted as they go on. Much easier to mess up and fall into the wrong area. But the nice thing is we get to try and attempt a special stage after every signpost until we collect all of the emeralds. Crawl along here. Right. Excellent. Got a bonus there. Spin dash over here. Be careful. Watch out. Get into this area where the emerald is. Excellent. We're locked in now. Gonna try and get this chaos emerald. Which is the most famous... Oh, oh, wow. That was a close call. A really close call. We almost failed the special stage there. Just in the nick of time, you managed to dodge that. Used a bit of momentum to keep going forward. And now we have four Chaos Emeralds. We're doing pretty well so far, aren't we? Well, let's keep advancing forward as we go to Marble Zone, Act 3. So, four Chaos Emeralds in. I'm enjoying this playthrough so far, and I hope this is something relaxing for you all, my friends. Sonic the Hedgehog is a classic legendary gaming title, and there's a reason it's so popular. It's got a charm. Music, soundtrack, background, characters, it's basically got everything you look for in a game. And considering this is the first installment of the Sonic the Hedgehog series, it really shows you how much of a pinnacle of gaming innovation this title is. To get so many features right on your first attempt is really something. A game that quite a lot of people choose to come back and visit now and then, myself included. I love the classic Sonic the Hedgehog games, excuse me. Right, just wait patiently for this to carry us across the lava. Okay. The lava's gonna launch us up, jump. Take out a bad nick with a time jump. There we go. Next. Anything over here? No. Watch out for spikes. Keep moving. Jump. There we go. Avoid that. Check that doesn't fall on top of us. That'd be a bad idea. Watch out for fire as well. We can play fast, but we can also approach with caution to keep a hold of our precious rings. I don't play in the most 
speedy mana. But I think it works for the purposes of this playthrough. To show you really how the level layout works. Rather than just blitzing through and you don't really get to see what the level's designed like. Because I'm running by it so fast. I like a mix. Going fast when I need to. And taking my time when I need to. Either approach is validated in this game, which I like. As long as it works, it works. The game doesn't really road you into taking one choice over the other. Get another shield. I'm gonna watch out. Excellent. Okay, watch out for this falling spike column. Nah, you're not gonna get me now. Don't tempt fate, Alakazam. Let's go. Alright. A lot of bad things to take down. Nah, oh, just playing through this. I love this game. It really takes me back. I definitely didn't play this well when I was a kid. I was much more reckless and impatient than I am now. I loved this game as a child, and I still love, as, love it as an adult. I really do. It's really got this charm to it. The animals, the characters, the music, everything. It's easy to see why the Sonic the Hedgehog series is so beloved in the eyes of many people. And this gameplay, even though it's quite simple, it's got its own challenges. But... If we just endure, we can go through anything, if need be. And I hope this is a journey that you're all enjoying together with me, my friends. Going through a classic, legendary Sega title. Alright, a bad neck, a bad neck. Jump, jump, jump. Alright, let's go. Jump. I want to fall now. Okay, we're getting there. Some lava. Alright, jump. Okay, if anything goes wrong, we've got our shield to protect us. That music signals a boss battle. There's Dr. Robotnik over there. Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman. Even his design's really cool. Now we're gonna have to avoid this flamethrower and not fall into the lava. Luckily, we managed to get through that boss relatively safe. And we free the captured animals in Marble Zone Act 3 and defeat Dr. Robotnik once more as Sonic passes Act 3. And now, we enter the Spring Yard Zone, Act 1. Once again, we get a really cool looking colorful background, the Spring Yard, lots of green and purple. Now we get to see these star barriers, which when you jump on them, bounce Sonic back. And also the spring yard wouldn't be complete without some springs, which can launch Sonic either into treasure, like rings and boxes that contain power-ups, or they can send us to our doom. Either way, we gotta watch what we are doing. forward momentum. You see? Spring can send us backwards. Let's take the high road. I have the high ground. A shield. Excellent. Excuse me. Just 
getting a little comfier here as I'm playing. All right. So, take our time through these platforms. They move in a certain pattern. Time it well, and let's see where this area leads. What can we find if we take the high ground? Some rings, more rings, even more rings, and even more rings at a checkpoint. All right. Now, jumping on some springs. Hmm. Must be a large clearing here. What's at the end? Boing, let's find out. These spiky enemies, gotta take them out with the spin dash. Can't jump on them. Hmm, we gotta time this perfectly. Excellent. Don't move too forward. Well, don't lose your balance, Sonic. But hey, we got a hundred rings, meaning we get an extra life, giving us seven lives. Getting closer to a cat's nine lives, aren't we? So, enjoying boinging around with some red springs. And you can see the difference between a yellow spring and a red spring by how much it makes you travel. Whoop. Ah well, that's why that shield exists. Didn't expect there would be a bad nick right in my face immediately. But nonetheless, that's why the shield's there, to keep us safe. And we run by the signpost, meaning that Sonic has passed Act 1 of the Spring Yard Zone. And yet again, we shall enter the special stage. Where we once again shall seek a Chaos Emerald. Hopefully we don't have as big of a close call as we did in the previous special stage. That was a slight miracle. I still have no idea how I managed to pull that off. All I did was push forward, I think. I still can't process exactly how I avoided it, but hey, ain't complaining. Now, let's keep looking for the Chaos Emerald. It can be so frustrating sometimes going through this special stage. Because you can get so close to finding the Emerald, and you might reverse the momentum and end up back exactly where you came from. Oh, oh. I must have jinxed myself. No more close calls, Alakazam. Come on. Let's get the emerald. Right. Let's go for the emerald. Come on. We can do this. I think if we just wait a moment, we'll be able to get the emerald. Yes, we can. Let's go. Let's go. And that is now. Another Chaos Emerald we have obtained. That brings us to a total of five Chaos Emeralds. For some reason while I'm recording this, it's not actually showing all of the Emeralds right away. But they are there, rest assured. Now, Spring Yard Zone Act 2. Take advantage of the Red Spring. And here as the Genesis slash Sega Mega Drive's processing power. To be able to do a maneuver that quick at the time this game was released was quite remarkable. You know, making Speed Sonic's gimmick and actually being able to execute in the same game is quite a good marketing tactic. Gotta go fast. But we also gotta go carefully so we don't fall off these platforms. So, quite maze-like at parts. Alright, what's over here? An invincibility power-up. Let's take full advantage if we can. Okay, jump, jump. Two bad next time. Three, four. 
keep moving forward knowing that we can't die. Oop. Hey, happy accident. We found a shield. Well, that's why it's called the Spring Yard Zone. <laughs> Alright, let's keep moving forward. Plenty of rings. If we're lucky, we don't take damage, we might get an extra life pretty soon. We just need 17 rings. Alright, watch out for this moving spike. Red spring. Four rings away from an extra life. Jump. Jump. Might as well jump. Jump! Alright. Gonna watch what we're doing here. Well done, Sonic. Now we have eight spare lives. One thing I really appreciate about Sonic the Hedgehog, considering some other games I've recorded for the purposes of ASMR, I'll explain in a moment. As we clear Spring Yard Zone. Act two, and grab another giant ring, so we can return to the special stage one more time. There's the emerald right there in the center. We just need to go get it. Oh, we're quite boxed in. We might be able to get this pretty quickly. Hey, a record. Sonic got them all. Six Chaos Emeralds. We now have every single Chaos Emerald in the game as we go towards Spring Yard Zone Act 3. Quite a lot to digest at once, so let's keep moving forward. We've got a shield as well, which is very nice. You see, you can tell this was early on in the lore of Sonic the Hedgehog. Usually in the games, it is seven Chaos Emeralds. But, as this was the first game, there's only six of them. Still, we've got all of them, which is very nice. Now, I'm going to use this invincibility to basically talk about where I was going to before we cleared Spring Yard Zone Act 2. One thing I really appreciate about Sonic the Hedgehog, especially after playing some other games that I have for ASMR purposes on this channel, is the flow, the control, and the smoothness of the jumping and movement in Sonic the Hedgehog. What I'm basically trying to say is that the handling of this game, the jumps are very satisfying and smooth. You always feel like you're in control when you want to be in control. And then when you want to go crazy and really just go wild with speed, you can do that. There's a lot of games I really enjoy that are platform based, but the platforming itself is a bit, how should I call this? Not bad, but blocky. Like the jumps are a bit static. You know what I'm trying to say, but you don't have that problem even in the very first Sonic the Hedgehog. You can make maneuvers like this. High speed, high momentum, and use it to your advantage to find secrets like this. An invincibility power-up. And the super sneakers, which allow Sonic to move even faster. I'm going to use as an excuse to safely get some more rings. And a hundred rings. We now have nine lives. As many as a cat. There is a well, there is more than one cat character later down the line in the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. I did a video on one of them. I think people who've watched that video know who it is, Sonic fans. And another character who came along many years later in the DS games. But rambling aside, here comes the boss, Dr. Robotnik. 
Uh-oh, we gotta take him out quickly. He's actually removing parts of the bottom of the stage. If we let him attack too many times, we'll have nowhere left to stand on. And then we're gonna die. Thankfully, my shield saved me there. Gotta take out Robotnik, but not fall down into an instant death. I remember this causing problems for me when I played as a child. This boss used to stop me quite a lot. I was too impatient. But, we managed to defeat Dr. Robotnik. And now we're gonna save the captured animals of Spring Yard Zone, Act 3. Sonic has passed Act 3, and we have obtained all six Chaos Emeralds. And now... Next. Labyrinth Zone, Act 1. This is just my personal opinion. Labyrinth Zone is kind of... an interesting level. To quite a lot of people, Labyrinth Zone is the worst zone in the entirety of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. And that's because of one main reason, water. Sonic will move much slower than he normally would in the water, and his jumps are a lot slower as well. Also, he has a risk of drowning which you can avoid by jumping out of the water for air, or finding small bubbles to absorb oxygen. Now, because of the nature of making Sonic slower and taking away his one major strength, a lot of people find water levels in Sonic games in general to be the worst areas in the game. I actually quite enjoy Labyrinth Zone, because it rewards my particular style of play. I don't mind taking a little bit of my time just to observe and see what's going on. But I can see why for a reckless player this must be infuriating, having to stop every 30 seconds for air. And also, watch out for maneuvering objects like that. So not only have you got to watch your oxygen, you got to move quickly forward. You gotta use speed and caution. So, water-based levels can be hit or miss depending on how they're executed. But I don't mind Labyrinth Zone. That music plays to tell you. Get some air quick or you're gonna die. But luckily, we had enough time. I really enjoy Labyrinth Zone. Maybe it's just because I really like the music. I don't know, I really... This is probably my favorite song in the entire game. It's just catchy to me. Also, I really like how down the line, Sonic the Hedgehog has appeared in various forms of media. Well, that's more games, movies, comic books, you name it. He's a cultural icon. I like how they made part of Sonic's character his weakness is water. To the point that like any body of water is Sonic's worst enemy. It's like the developers were basically acknowledging that, okay, fans don't like it when Sonic's in water. Let's make that his in-universe weakness. Which I think is a nice little touch. Now, we keep moving through the labyrinth. It's quite a long stage as well, because we do need to approach with a little bit more caution. We can speed ahead, sure, but what if we drown along the way? We don't want that to happen. So, using these moving platforms, we can keep moving. Right, watch out. Cannon launching flame at us. Keep moving. Batnik springing out of the ground. Now we're in water, so... Need to wait for a moment for some oxygen. There we go. Next. 76 rings. Nice. A switch. Come on, give us some good oxygen. 
Nice. Ooh. Oh well. We lost our shield. Nothing to find over here. Let's keep going forward. Hey. There we go. Sonic is past. Labyrinth Zone. Act 1. Okay. Now. Get a little bit cozier. And we'll play Labyrinth Zone Act 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR. Recording this really makes me appreciate the challenges this game has to offer and sharing it with you people. It's an experience we can all enjoy together. Also, as I'm rambling away, I just realized this level is called Sonic Labyrinth. Which is also the name of an actual alternative Sonic game. There's a game called Sonic Labyrinth on the Sega Game Gear. Sega's answer to the Nintendo Game Boy. It's got a pretty bad reputation. But I actually quite enjoy it. And I'm considering the idea of filming it for an ASMR gameplay through. To any of you Sonic fans, or people interested in general in more content like this, let me know what you think, if you'd like me to film Sonic Labyrinth. I'll probably end up doing it anyway, just because that kind of thing interests me. I like the Game Gear. And also, you people seem to like Sonic the Hedgehog playthroughs, so maybe it's a win-win. But let me know in the comments what you think. Now, Notice how when you're out of the water in Labyrinth Zone, it almost feels like a different level just because it's a kind of relaxed state. I don't have to worry about drowning, so I can just kind of chill out, take my time. But I can understand why people don't like these stages. Sometimes you just want to get the level cleared as quickly as you can, but you can't. An invincibility power up. Excellent. Let's take full advantage of it and blitz our way through here. Using it to ignore obstacles. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. Wait for some oxygen. There we go. 99 rings. Whoop. I got 99 rings, but damage ain't one. Well, I was supposed to come up with some kind of witty joke there, but guess what? It ain't happening. I ain't that smooth. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving forward. Um, whoop, let's dodge damage. I got 99 problems, but that bad nick ain't one. Hey. <laughs> the game giving us an extra life as if to say, right, Alakazam, shut up. Keep playing the level. You know, you can drown, right? You know, that's not good for your health. So, gonna move on. Alright. There we go. Precious air. sense the end of this level and I was right. We go for the signpost indicating that Sonic has passed Act 2 of Labyrinth Zone. Really enjoying this game playthrough so far as we go into Labyrinth Zone Act 3. Getting to share this with all you people really is satisfying. I'm trying to make a relaxing experience for you explore this game in a chilled out manner it makes me appreciate the game in a way that I wouldn't have if I was just playing in my own and just messing around being on my best behavior and getting to share this beautiful game with you all really brings a smile to my face and hopefully yours it too even as I stumble on my words what I'm basically trying to say is I hope you enjoy this video 
whether it helps you fall asleep, whether it's something fun to watch, or something insightful. Whatever you get from this, I hope you, I hope you like this video. Now we're gonna keep moving forward. Labyrinth Zone, Act Three. Avoid these spikes. If we get a bit too reckless, we'll get hit by this rotating spike column. Jump out of the way. Get some air. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We can get some air. Come on. There we are. Ten extra lives. So if we make a mistake, we can afford to lose. Uh, speak of the devil. I made a mistake. But this is why the shield exists. Honestly, my gameplay experience could be so different if the shield didn't exist in this game. Just having something to fall back on is always nice. It's always good to have offense, but it's great to have a defense on top of that. Okay? Now, timing. Different motion, different timing to avoid these columns. Spike traps, bad nicks. Moving platforms. We can get through it all. Alright. Moving forwards, watch out for the spikes. Another invincibility power up. It's like the game's challenging you to take a risk. If you went towards there with no rings, it's like the game's going, oh yeah. You want to show a little bit of courage and get rewarded for it? There you go. Think you can make that jump? I like little gameplay designs like that where the developer is clearly just messing with you, just like, here you go. And little hidden away items like this. We get two extra lives. And we got the music playing saying you're gonna drown. Well, not today. So you can manage to get out of the water pretty quick. So, we've already been on the right side of the screen, so let's try going to the left. See if that button we press below opens anywhere. Another one. Let's get some air first. Let's not rush ahead. We don't know what might lie ahead, so we got to use a bit of caution. Bad Nick. Jump. Come on, we can do this. Come on, there we go. Nice one, Sonic. A careful jump. Another invincibility power-up. Let's not get too reckless, though. Get some air first. And then... Blitz ahead. Checkpoint. And more air. spring. Air fast. We don't know where that spring leads. Let's look up fast. You never know, you could jump in that spring. It could send you right into some spikes. Sometimes it's good to play with a bit of caution. Oh, I jinxed myself. But that's why we always carry a shield with us at all times. A good defense can never hurt. Didn't get much time to respond. Nonetheless, we'll jump through here. Make the clearing. Timing. Yeah, I can really see why people don't like Labyrinth Zone. Even though I personally like it, the idea of, oh crap, I gotta jump over three of these spinning spikes, and I'm gonna drown if I don't make a decision quick. It highly encourages you to make a mistake and rush ahead without thinking. But if you keep calm, you'll be able to get through it. Now, take out these bad nicks. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. Quite satisfying. Ooh. 
these things I'm jumping on that look like they should be stuck in the top of a bottle of wine. Oh, the water's rising really quick. More bad things. They like to hide in the ground, don't they? Just keep moving, keep moving. A shield. You never know. Could come in really handy. That's Robotnik. Let's get him. Whoop. Jumped too soon. Luckily I had the shield. Oh man, the water's rising. I gotta multitask a lot. Jump. Oh dear, I lost my rings. Luckily, we had some brief invincibility there. Whew. That would have been a nightmare. Robotnik escaped. But we'll get him. We freed the animals, at least. As Sonic clears, Labyrinth Zone. Act free. Luckily, there's a very brief moment of invincibility when you lose your rings. That saved us. And now, speaking of saving us, we have now entered the Starlight Zone, Act 1. I think this is probably the single nicest gesture the developers, whether it was intentional or not, to put in the game. Labyrinth Zone. An extra life, nice. Labyrinth Zone is a very challenging stage. I mean... I made a mistake at the very end, and if it wasn't for a brief period of invincibility, I could have easily had to go back to the start. As, you, as I said, pressure from water makes you make mistakes because you've got to feel like you've got to rush. But the developers must have been nice and went, here's the starlight zone. Something really pleasant. I love the music in this zone. It's so nice. It's soothing relaxing. And while this stage does have its challenges, it's significantly easier to pull off a decent run of it compared to Labyrinth Zone. Also, you get supersonic speed back. It's like the developers were basically saying like, well done for clearing the labyrinth. Here, have a breather. It's a pretty background as well. Twenty rings. Nice, very generous. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Spin dash. More rings. Spin dash so this fan doesn't catch us. And by reaching the signpost, Sonic has passed Act 1 of the Starlight Zone. A beautiful stage. I really love the aesthetic. Let's get some more as we enter Starlight Zone. Act 2. Very beautiful stage. The more I think about it, they definitely use this aesthetic. Excuse me. They definitely use this aesthetic again in the title Sonic CD. There's a level in that game called Stardust Speedway. And I feel like this is the very early stages of that idea. Sonic CD is a game I would love to get round to eventually. And I will, when the time is right. But, it's got the wheels spinning in my head. I'm thinking about a Sonic game in the future, and I'm looking at the original Sonic and going, Hey, you can see the early fragments of some ideas that would eventually blossom into beautiful ideas in their own right. One day when we visit Sonic CD, 
maybe you'll come back to this video and watch the Starlight Zone and go, hey, Alakazam was right. Or maybe you're going to turn around and be like, nah, Alakazam, you crazy. What are you talking about? Either way, Starlight Zone is a beautiful stage in its own right. Whether it actually was the early idea for a later stage in a future Sonic game. Gotta keep moving these platforms. Significantly easier compared to Labyrinth Zone. Ah, quite a nice relaxing level. 96 rings, 13 spare lives. Let's go for 14 spare lives. One ring left. <laughs> we were one ring away from getting an extra life. Oh well, we still have passed the stage relatively quick. And now, Starlight Zone, Act Free. Carefully time jump over that enemy and spin dash our way to victory. These enemies, we can spin dash under them and use the fan's momentum to move. Gotta watch out, don't take any damage. Red Spring. Wonderful. Time for a jump. Oh, some enemies. Enemy bombs up ahead. Get the invincibility quick. Excellent. Now the enemy problem solves itself. Come on, a higher jump. Come on, there we go. For momentum, let's go. A very beautiful stage. Really nice of the developers to just put in an easier stage after what they probably discovered themselves was a challenging area in the Labyrinth Zone. I love when developers do that though. Like saying, well done, take a break. But still, keep yourself on your toes. We're not going to give you it for free, but we will make it a bit easier. Alright. Moving. Hey, we got that 14th life we were looking for. Now what lies ahead? Excellent. How high can this jump go? Whoop. <laughs> Slipped off there. Apologies. Okay. Spin dash. No, maybe not. Let's go for a run. There's Dr. Robotnik. Hmm, wait a minute. Gotta avoid these things exploding. In fact, we can jump up using these spikes to hit Robotnik. Perhaps we could hit him with one of the spikes as well. Wonder if the game will let us do that. Hmm. Hey, we can damage him with his own projectiles. Nice one. Dr. Robotnik goes down one more time. And we free even more animals from the clutches of Dr. Robotnik. And now, this indicates that Sonic has passed Act Free of the Starlight Zone. Hmm. 
Now, we get to the final stages. The Scrap Brain Zone. Act 1. The game's gonna throw everything it has at us. So, we need all the skills, composure, and confidence we need to move forward. Hmm, a spinning platform. We have to do the jump perfectly. This isn't gonna work. This is actually the second time we are visiting the Scrap Brain Zone on this channel, Alexam ASMR. We visited the Scrap Brain in the Sega Game Gear version of Sonic the Hedgehog. And you can see the design in a lot better detail than they possibly could have on the Sega Game Gear. A lot more detail, smoke in the background, lights, and active machinery. I love both versions of Sonic the Hedgehog. I love the Sega Game Gear slash Master System, and also the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. In my childhood, it was the Sega Master System, and then the Sega Mega Drive, as it is known in Europe. Whereas you Americans among us, it was called the Sega Genesis. Which I didn't find out until I was much older. It's pretty cool though. Two completely different names for a console. Now. Keep moving forward in the Scrap Brain Zone. Quite a challenging design. Hmm. What's up here? Hmm. That column almost instantly disappears. Gonna jump perfectly. There we go. Haha, <laughs> nice one. It was, it was worth it. We got a shield. Yep, instantly worth it. It's the final stage. I'll take any kind of shield I can get. Any kind of protection from arrows and mistakes. Okay. Keep moving down. Be very careful we don't get crushed here. Spin out of the way. Don't get compacted. Down we go. Watch out for any enemies. There we go. Keep going, keep going, Sonic. Now we've cleared the Scrap Brain Zone. Act 1. Well done, Sonic. We're not finished yet. Now, let's go. To Scrap Brain Zone, Act 2. Now we are inside Dr. Robotnik's Mechanical Fortress. Once again, you can see the early basis of designs that will be used later on in Sonic games. So, I remember talking about how the Starlight Zone is probably early inspiration for Stardust Speedway and Sonic CD. You can really see how, excuse me, the Scrap Brain Zone, it has gimmicks like this spinning around and these saws that are an early basis for levels such as the Death Egg and metallic madness, amongst other things, like the egg carrier, and so on and so forth. It really is. Like, you can really see that they had some ideas and they just expanded them over the years. Now, as I ramble away, I gotta make sure I don't get hit by these spike columns. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We can do this, we can do this. Ah, nice one. But yeah. You can just see the early stages of some ideas that years later would get much more developed. Don't get crushed, but also use the treadmill's momentum. Don't get an electric shock. Come on, Sonic. Take him down. Excellent. 
careful jumps. Jump, one vanishes, jump, one vanishes. Don't go into this saw. Come on. Stay in the middle and use the forward momentum. Nice. Whoa. Okay, that was the game just... That was the developers just messing with us there. Okay, that was the developers double messing with us there. Throwing that buzzsaw at us out of nowhere. And then walking right into a swinging spike trap. Well, they got me there. I'll give them that. You may be a worthy opponent, developers. But we're going to complete your game, aren't we, my friends? After all, we're enjoying ourselves. This time you ain't getting me with a spike column. Even though it's extremely easy. We managed to get past Act 2 of the Scrap Brain Zone. We took a bit of damage, but it's okay. Next. Let's go. Dr. Robotnik. Triggers a switch. The floor. Scrap Brain Zone, Act 3. The Scrap Brain must be built on the ruins of the Labyrinth Zone, as the design is similar, but in a more grayish manner. You could almost call this Labyrinth Zone Act 4, if you wanted. So it's me fine. I enjoy the Labyrinth Zone. But to some players, this would be your absolute worst nightmare. But then maybe that was the intention. This is... The final conventional level in Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR. With the exception of the final boss, this is as challenging as it's gonna get. So let's do this. Run, my animal friends, to safety. All right. Oxygen. Purple water. Don't want to find out what that is. Oxygen. Air. Whatever you call it, give me it. There we go. Good things come to those who wait. trap that would have led us right into those spikes in the ceiling. Just as well we didn't. Well, ain't drowning today. Why am I jinxing myself like this? I'm gonna end up with a close call, aren't I? Nah, I can sense that something bad's gonna happen. I'm gonna jinx myself big time. Don't tempt fate. Swimming enemies. I would normally collect rings, but you know what? Prioritize getting some air. 49 rings. Moving spikes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Quickly now. At least they generously put some air in between these parts. some air. Excellent. Steadily progressing for Scrap Brain Zone. Act free. We go from this mechanical fortress to another variation of the Labyrinth Zone. Take down the bad neck. Okay. Watch out, 
up for this flame cannon, which is miraculously walking underwater. Must be one strong cannon if it's walking under there. Water. My penguin friends. Oh, I got distracted by the penguins. And I lost some rings. Apologies, my friends. Can't afford to make mistakes like this in the end of the game. Even if I have spare lives. I can't blame the penguins. It's my own fault for finding them cute. Anyways, let's go. We need to find some air pretty quickly. By the time we get down onto this switch. Come on, we need some air, we need some air. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, we can do this. We need an air bubble. <laughs> oh! Okay, slipping away from my ASMR mode for 15 seconds. Oh, damn, that was a close call. That was a really close call. Four minutes into the level and we were on zero seconds of an oxygen timer. Oh, that, that's the closest call I've ever had in a Sonic game. Probably ever. I'm glad I was recording this so I could prove that it happened. That was on zero seconds. Just about near the end of the stage as well can't make this stuff up. Well, I think someone's looking out for me. I think it's you, my friends, watching over me. My guardian angels. Thank you. Now, I'm going to control time and space. My friends. Yeah, deja vu? You see, those springs lead to the final stage. But I decided to use my powers of controlling time and space to take us back to the beginning of the stage. To show you a really cool secret for you people playing the game. At the start of Scrap Brain Zone Act 3, do this. Beat the moving platform and get underneath it. It's a bit unorthodox what I'm doing here, but I'm doing it for a reason. Now, if you beat that moving platform and manage to squeeze your way through it, you actually find a way through the scrap brain zone that is significantly easier and less prone to making you drown. Basically, it's the final stage of the game besides the final boss. And it's a massive shortcut if you're willing to take it. So. That's why I had to rewind time for a moment, to show you this. It's not necessary to complete the game, but I just thought it'd be nice to show you both options. The quick path, and the normal path. Now, it doesn't instantly take you to the end of the level, but it takes you to here, which is where I nearly drowned just a few moments ago. Now, remember where we are here? We're just right about at the end of the stage. Cuts roughly about three minutes of time out of our journey. I'm gonna get up here. I'm gonna reach the red springs, which are going to lead us to the final boss. Now let's reset to the previous clip. The normal path. Let's go. Now. now, back to the original clip. Together with Sonic, we approach the final zone. And we have zero rings. We can't afford to make a single mistake. So we have the final showdown with Dr. Robotnik. Not that it would matter if we even had rings. 
If Robotnik hit us once, crushing us to death would be an instant kill anyways. Whichever column, even if I see a column and I'm able to hit Robotnik, priority number one is our safety. We don't want to die in the final zone. Let's take down Robotnik. Ah, we missed. Still, we're alive. Keep moving, keep moving. Progressively damaging him more and more. May not have hit him there, but we're evading damage. Final boss. Let's take on this challenge together, my friends. I know we can do this. A careful jump, a dodge, and an attack. Slowly but surely, we will take our enemy down. Hmm. Miscalculated there. Thought he was going to appear on the left. Whoop. Avoiding him. Let's get him. Can't afford to make a single mistake. We did it. We defeated Dr. Robotnik. Now to give chase to him. No escape. Spring the world to life as our journey in Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR draws to a close. As our adventure in Sonic the Hedgehog ASMR draws to a close, I'd like to close off this video by saying thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single one of you, both subscriber and newcomer alike for your support, kindness, and generosity. I've deeply enjoyed playing this game and sharing it with every single one of you. And I hope that no matter who you are or where you are, you have a wonderful time. All right? Take care of yourselves, my friends. I have much more content on the way similar to this and beyond, and I hope you'll join me as we go on even more adventures. Until then, thank you once again. This is Alakazam A-S-M-R, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. And adios, my friends. Thank you.